Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about a question that is officially marked as easy and even has a pretty high acceptance rate. However, finding a method to solve this problem optimally is a surprisingly tough challenge and I'm willing to bet you'll still be surprised when you see the solution I have for you. Stay tuned. All right, so here's the problem. We're given the root of a BST. We're also told that the left subtree only contains values less than or equal to the root node value. The right subtree only contains values that are larger than the root node value. And finally, we're told to return the element that occurs the most frequently in this entire BST. If there are multiple elements, we have to return all of them in any order. Okay, so at this point, you're probably wondering, how hard can this question be? Can we just iterate through the tree and keep track of the count of elements we've seen and then return the one that occurred the most frequently? Well, yeah, that's why this question is marked as easy. So the real challenge really lies in how to do this question of o in O of 1 space. Now, you may already have some ideas about this, but if your solution depends on recursion, remember that each time you make a recursive call, you're actually occupying extra space on the stack. Each call to the function occupies stack space, resulting in linear time complexity. Additionally, using a stack or queue-based approach for BFS also won't help you. These data structures will also take up space as they hold more and more nodes, and will ultimately result in O of n space complexity still. So what we're going to do instead is tree mutation, which can be done in O of 1 space. Let's review how we're going to do this. Let's say this is our tree. Again. Our goal is to traverse this tree with an in-order traversal. Why? Well, if you had a sorted list, and I asked you to return the most frequently occurring elements in this list, could you do it in O of 1 space? Of course! You just iterate through the list straightforwardly, and keep a running count of how many times the current element has occurred. For example, at the first index, we have current num set to 1, and this one has only occurred once, so both the maximum and current streak are set to 1. When we iterate to the second element, the number of times this element 2 has occurred is also 1, so we don't update max streak or curse streak. Same thing for element 3, and same thing for the first occurrence of an 8. However, once we reach the second occurrence of the number 8, 8 has now occurred twice, so the current streak is now 2, and the maximum streak we've seen is also 2. On the third occurrence of 8, we increment both to 3, and so on. When we reach the 9, then, well, we reset the current streak to 1 because there has only been one occurrence of 9, but our maximum streak is still 5, so in the end, we'll return the number that was associated with the maximum streak. In this case, that's 8. Now recall that an in-order traversal is one that gives us the values of the nodes in order, assuming that the BST is sorted in this way that was described in the problem description. So basically, by doing an in-order traversal, we are doing the equivalent of iterating through a sorted array. So let's say we're currently at the root node, and we have some sort of loop, like current node equals current node dot left. Well, once we iterate to the left node, we're unable to ever revisit the node we just came from, and unfortunately, doing an in-order traversal will require us to re revisit nodes up the tree. So let's rephrase this question. Let's say that our goal is to make every element connected to its next larger element via nodes to the right. That might sound really confusing. Here's what I mean. So you can see for yourself in this tree, if you follow this procedure, you'll visit all the nodes in the correct order. For example, let's say we start at the leftmost node of your current subtree, which is 1. You move to the right, so you go to 2. You move to the right again, so you go to the 3 move to the right again, so you go to the 4. Then, once again, you start over at the leftmost node in the right subtree, starting at 5, you move to the right, you get to the 6, and then you move to the right again, you get to the 8. Now, this may seem difficult to grasp as to why we do this, and this may also seem really hard to implement. Let's first talk about why this works. Recall, all nodes in the left subtree have a smaller or equal value compared to the root node, so therefore, if we want to connect elements in a sequential order, then we must connect the largest element in the left subtree to my current node. How do I find the largest element in the left subtree? Well, that's actually really easy. 
Since all nodes in the right subtree are larger than the root node, we just take the rightmost element in the left subtree because all elements to the right of the current node are larger than the current node value. So here's what we'll do. If the current node has a left pointer, we take that left pointer. We then move all the way to the right within that subtree until there are no more right children. We draw a rightward pointer toward the cur node. We delete this left pointer in the cur node, and then we repeat this process for the next subtree. Again, we find the rightmost node in the left subtree. In this case, it's going to be the one, and then we point it at the current node, which in this case is going to be the two. We then delete the left pointer and move on to the next element. At this point, there are no more left pointers to follow for the node labeled one. So we move to the right and mark one as visited. Again, there are no more left pointers for this two node either. So we move to the right and mark two as visited. We repeat this process for three and four as well. Here, we see that we indeed have a left pointer at the six. So instead of marking six as visited, we first find the rightmost node in the left subtree of six. That's just going to be five. So we point five back to six and we delete the left pointer of six once again. Then since five has no more left pointers, we visit five and we move to the right. Six has no more left pointers either. So we move right once again. And finally, we end up at eight. So we visit eight. And now if you take a look at the order in which we visited nodes, you see that we indeed visited nodes in order. Okay, so now let's implement this idea. We'll need to walk through each line of the process together so that we don't get lost. Firstly, let's initialize a cur node variable set to the root, an empty result array, cur streak and max streak set to zero, and a cur num, which is set to infinity. Again, in the analogy of iterating through a sorted array, you can imagine that cur num is just the current number we're looking at. Cur streak is the number of times a current element has occurred. And finally, max streak represents the maximum streak of all numbers we've seen so far. We'll then enter this loop, while cur node. Let's first find the rightmost neighbor of the left subtree. We'll set neighbor equal to cur node dot left, and then we'll just iterate to the right until we have no more elements to the right. We'll then set this neighbor's right pointer to the current node, which at the moment is still set to the root node. Then we need to repeat this process for the next subtree and also delete the left pointer of the node for which we have already found the neighbor. So let's set this temp variable equal to cur node dot left. We'll delete the left pointer and then we'll set the current node to the temp variable. Okay, so that's gonna take care of all cases in which we have to populate the right pointer. Let's now take care of the case in which we find a node that has no left pointer. Remember, since we're deleting the left pointer after we're done drawing the right pointer to the current node, that means that we'll only ever arrive at this else case if we've already processed this node before. If we've already processed this node, that means that its right pointer has been reappropriated to point back up the tree, and we can use it to do our in-order traversal. So firstly, we'll see if the current value is equal to current num. If so, we increment our cur streak variable. If not, that means we have found a new number in our, quote, sorted array. And if, and if we've found a new element in our sorted order, that means we'll never see the previous element ever again. So we set the cur streak equal to zero and set the cur num equal to the current node value. Then we take a look at our cur streak variable. If the cur streak variable is equal to the maximum streak, that means we have found a variable that occurs at least as frequently as the current mode. If the cur streak ever exceeds the value of the max streak, then we reset our max streak to the current streak and set the result back to the current number. Finally, now that we're done processing the element, we move the current node to its right neighbor, which again we know is pointing back up the tree to the next larger element. And then we just return this result and we can see that we beat 99% of all users in space complexity. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful or interesting, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.